Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching. We're checking out a new power station today. This is the Big Blue Cell Power 500. Now, like the name suggests, this has a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter inside with around 537 watt hours of capacity. Now, inside this, you have lithium iron phosphate chemistry. So you should expect around 2000 life cycles and still have 80% of the capacity remaining. That means you can use this for almost six years and still have plenty of storage capacity left. Now the price on this power station comes in at $399, but there is a Christmas special going on to bring the price down $70. So you can pick this up for $329. Now against the competition, that price is pretty decent. Some of the most competing power stations compared to this would be the Jackery 500, the Blue Eddy EB55, or the GoLabs R500. Now there are a ton of other power stations, but those are some of the most popular that have similar features to this unit here. Now, when Mike from Big Blue reached out to my channel to see if I wanted to review this power station, I went over all the features and I noticed there might be one little problem for some people. I just want to be as transparent as possible. Now, whenever you're charging up this power station, the AC inverter outlets here are shut off. Just so you know, this does not support full pass through charging. Whenever you're charging it, you can use the DC output or all the USB ports, but you are unable to turn on the AC inverter and you can't use that. So I just want to let you guys know right up front that was an issue with this power station. So let's go ahead and start talking about some of the features on the power station like this display. Now I really like the display on this power station. You get an input wattage, you get an output wattage, then you have this nice blue ring that tells you a quick glance of the battery capacity and inside that you get an actual capacity percentage. Looking closer to the bottom of the screen, you get a time till empty, which is estimating 70 hours at its current load. And then if it's charging, you get an estimated time till full, which is nice. And then you have your DC, USB, and AC inverter icons that tell you if each one's turned on or off. Now let's go ahead and jump into the actual testing of the power station and the DC output. Now I like to test the max amount of power that you can pull from these outputs. So you have a 12 volt cigarette plug with a dust cover and then you have two 5521 barrel connectors. Now it says it's rated at 10 amps. I was able to pull a max of 156 watts out of these connections before it shut off. So that's a really good amount of power you can pull from these. And it is regulated at 13.3 volts. Let's go ahead and jump right into the capacity test using the DC output. Now, when I'm testing these power stations, I always like to test the advertised capacity. Now, this power station comes in with 537 watt hours of capacity. Let's go ahead and discharge it through the DC output to see if there's any losses or how the BMS reacts as it goes from 100% down to 0%. I'm looking for the actual capacity we get as we use this battery. So we're discharging the battery at a 0.2 C rate, which is 107 watts. It's going to track the watt hours, the amp hours, and the time. Let's go ahead and let this run until the battery is completely empty. Okay, guys, the power station just hit 0%. The DC output just shut off. Let's go ahead and check the screen of the battery load tester. Okay, so the test ran for 4 hours and 29 minutes. We pulled a total of 477 watt hours, or about 36.89 amp hours. Now the results of this test are basically telling us we should see anywhere around 477 watt hours when we take the battery from 100% down to 0% using the DC output. Now if we divide 477 by 537, that's actually 88.9% of the advertised capacity. Now let's go ahead and talk about the AC inverter on this power station. So you have two separate outlets that share a grounding hole here. Now this inverter is rated at 500 watts continuous or 1000 watts peak. What's really nice is I plugged in my oscilloscope and it actually is a pure sine wave at a 60 hertz frequency. So everything looks good there. Now I always like to test the max load for this power station. So I plugged in a 500 watt load to this inverter and ran for over 10 minutes. No issues, it just kept going and going. Now I tried to turn up the power a bit to about 550 watts and it actually ran that load for about three minutes before it shut off from being overpowered. So. Uh, you can definitely run a little bit over 500 watts, so 550 for about three minutes, but I wouldn't expect more than that. I always like to do a capacity test to see how many watt hours we can pull while using the AC inverter. Let's go ahead and jump into that test. It's always good to know how many watt hours we can pull from the battery as we use the AC inverter. So what I'm gonna do is take this all the way from 100% down to 0% or whenever it shuts off, track the amount of watt hours, and then we can calculate the efficiency of the inverter. I'll have my time lapse running here on my watt meter. Let's go ahead and see how many watt hours we can pull from the battery. Okay, so the AC inverter shut off when it hit 0%. I had to charge it up briefly to get the AC inverter turned back on. That's why it's flashing 5%. Now you can see we pulled a total of 460 watt hours. 
Now, if we do the math, that's around 85% of the advertised capacity. So if you're gonna be taking this battery from 100% down to 0% using the AC inverter, you can expect somewhere around 460 watt hours. Now, using this power station is really easy. If you wanna turn off the AC inverter or DC outputs, there's a power button beneath each one. You just tap that and it turns it off. Now, they're nice because they have a backlight so you can see them in the dark. Now, along the bottom of the power station, you have your charging input port here, which is a 5525 port. It accepts 12 to 30 volts input. And then you have two USB-A ports that support Quick Charge 3.0. And then you have two USB-C ports that support 60 watts power delivery input and output. Now, right here, you have your main power button. You press and hold this for about five seconds and it'll turn off the power station. Now this power station has a really good build quality, comes in at 17.1 pounds, which is a little bit heavier than other power stations in this size bracket, even using lithium iron phosphate. That makes me think that it has a little bit heavier duty case. Now there's this nice handle on the top that's retractable. You kind of just push it down and it's out of the way if you don't want to use it. Anytime you want to move around, you just pull the handle up and you're good to go. Now on the side of the power station, you have an intake fan on this side, an exhaust fan on this side to keep everything cool inside. And then on the back, you have an LED diffused light here, it has three different modes. You have a high mode, you have a low mode, and then you have an SOS mode in case you have some sort of emergency. Now this power station does come with an 18 month warranty from the factory. So if you have any issues, you can reach out to their support group and you'll get that taken care of through their default limited warranty. Now let's go ahead and talk about charging up this power station. There are four different options. We'll talk about the slowest first and then move to the fastest. Now the slowest way to charge this up is by using the DC charging cable. It has a cigarette plug on one end and then you plug the other end into the charging port. You get around 49 to 50 watts while using this charging method. The next fastest way to charge would be using the included wall adapter. You can charge at 92 to 93 watts while it's plugged in the power station, which is pretty decent. Now the next fastest way to charge is by using two USB-C power delivery cables. Each one provides 60 watts charging, so you can actually charge this up at 120 watts at the same time. Now if you want to charge it up even faster, you can use two USB-C power delivery cables and the included AC wall charger to charge it up at 213 watts. Now the last way to charge this up is by using a solar panel. It does not come with a solar adapter, so you're gonna to have to purchase one that has the connection you need for your solar panels, but you just basically plug in a 5525 connector here and it supports 12 to 30 volts. So it supports 12 volt panels in parallel. It does not support panels in series, so do not plug in two panels in series. But you can definitely over panel this. Let's go ahead and take it outside and do some solar testing on this power station. Okay guys, we're out here. We're gonna do some solar testing today. Now, we just had this huge storm, got 14 inches of snow a couple days ago. So uh, basically just have to lay the panel out on the snow. And you see it's pretty propped up because we're uh, basically almost near winter solstice where the sun is the lowest in the sky for the Northern hemisphere. So it's pretty propped up. This is my Bouge RV 180 watt solar panel. Now looking at the solar conditions, it's around 30 degrees and uh, we have a few high clouds, but it's mostly clear. So we should get some good results. Now, because the power station is a lithium iron phosphate battery, it can't handle charging under 32 degrees. So I have my wires going inside. This is 12 gauge and they're just going into my basement. So with the solar panel plugged in, we're getting 82 watts input on the CP500. Now this does have a pretty low amperage limit. So I think this is about what we're gonna see with the solar panel I'm using, about 82 watts. Now from previous experience, I know that that solar panel puts out more power. So just to verify, I plugged it into my EB70. You can see we're getting 147 watts input charging on this power station. So this should be pretty normal for anybody that wants to charge up this power station using solar panels. Now I wanted to test the maximum charging input we could get through that barrel connector, the 5525 input jack. Now it supports 12 to 30 volts input. So I have my adjustable power supply plugged in set to 29.96 volts. And I crank the amps all the way up, but it's limiting it to 3.65 amps. So the max amount of power we can get in is 112 to 113 watts using this charging port. Now just for fun, I wanted to test the maximum charging input. So I hooked up my adjustable power supply and my dual USB-C charger. You can see we get 233 to 34 watts max charging on this. Now at that charging rate, basically charge this up in a little bit over two hours. Now in this part of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and test running my Iceco VL60 Pro off this power station. Now, if you haven't seen one of these 12 volt compressor fridges before, they are really cool. They're like an ice chest or a cooler, except for they don't require any ice. They run on electricity, they have a compressor inside, and you can actually set the temperature exactly what you want. So you can run it as a fridge or a freezer, and they're super efficient, so they work really well off these power stations. 
Now the purpose of this section of the video is just to make sure that this power station can handle running a fridge. Now with a 13.3 volt regulated output, that should be fine. I just wanna make sure that there aren't any eco mode settings or anything that will turn the power station output off overnight. So we're gonna let the fridge run overnight and we'll see what it looks like in the morning. Hopefully the fridge is still running. Okay, so everything looks good. It's been over 24 hours. Now I started the test around 5.30 last night and I was hoping to get some time to check in before I went to work this morning, but I just had to get in a little bit earlier. And uh, well, now it's about eight o'clock at night and everything looks good. Now looking a little closer at the power station, we pulled 33% of the capacity during this test. Now it's been running for about 27 and a half hours. Now in my basement, it's pretty cool. It's around 65 degrees in the winter. And so you'd expect more power usage from this fridge as it was warmer. But the purpose of this test was just to make sure that it would run and everything looked good. The fridge ran perfectly fine and there were no issues running it on this power station. Now, a little over a month ago, I put out a video about seven requirements every power station needs to have. And I consider that like the gold standard for power stations. So let's go ahead and see how this power station stacks up against those standards. Requirement number one, does the power station charge up in four to five hours from 0% to 100%? Yes, it does. You can check that one off the list. Number two, does this power station offer pass through charging? This one's kind of halvesies. It does with the DC output and the USB outputs, but not with the AC inverter. You can't check that one off. Number three, does it have a pure sine wave inverter? Yes, it does. You can check that one off. Number four, does it have a regulated DC output? That DC output is regulated at 13.3 volts. You're good to go. Check that one off. Number five, does the display show you everything you need to know about the power station? Yes, this display is actually really good. It shows me everything I want to know. You can check that one off the list. The sixth requirement is do all the outputs stay powered on without any weird settings shutting off? Yes, everything stays powered on. You can run a 12 volt compressor fridge just fine. You can run DC fan all night. No issues. Number six is a checkbox. And number seven was kind of just a bonus one, but does the power station support 100 watt power delivery input and output? Well, this one's kind of interesting because it has two 60 watt input output ports. So it's 120 watts total input and output, but only you know, 60 watts per port. So you guys can make the decision on that one if it meets the criteria. So looking at that gold standard of power stations today, there's so much competition. You really have to have a high level for your power station if it's going to compete. And so if we, as we look at this one here, it only met six of the seven requirements, which is pretty decent. So you have to ask yourself, if you want to purchase this, do you absolutely need that pass-through charging? Now, of course, you can still use the DC output or the USB outputs. You just can't use the AC inverter while it's charging. Now, the main purpose of me making these videos is not only to review the power station, help you guys know if this is something that works for you, but it also is a way for me to give constructive criticism back to the companies that make these. So and hopefully they're watching this and they can make these changes to make this power station better because I feel that this would be the ultimate power station at the price point of $329 if the AC inverter did not shut off when charging. So um, one last thing I want to talk about is this carry bag. I like how it comes with the power station. You can throw the adapters in there, the charger, owner's manual, warranty card, all fit in here without any issues. Now, if you guys have any questions about this power station, go ahead and throw a comment down below. Would you guys pick this power station up? How would you use it? Uh, just let me know what you guys think about this power station. I thought it was pretty good build quality, had a lot of features and performance for the cost. And thank you guys so much for watching. I always love doing these review videos, doing the extensive testing, making sure everything works on these power stations. This one performed pretty decent. Anyway, guys, we'll see you guys in the next video.